Hi folks, it's William with Quarantine Studio, here once again in the studio. Today's video, I've got a simple question for you. Have you seen my keys? Yeah, well, that's a question I don't ask myself a whole lot because, well, nobody's willing to touch my keys. The reason being, because I have one of these on there. So, uh, let's zoom in and take a look at what we got here. So how is it that I keep my keys? Well, uh, one of these wonderful little keychains that we offer there at Quarantine Studio. Now, um, this, these uh, few right here have been painted. I've been working on these. Um, I worked on these at one of our latest trade shows. And I uh, just had nothing to do, so I brought my paints with me and painted them. They don't take very long to paint. Um, you don't need an airbrush, which is really cool. Uh, so you can take these and travel with them if you need to and, uh, and paint them along the way. Um, so um, we've got a variety of them here. Um, they come in a raw resin, uh, like this little guy here, uh, or this guy here. And so you can see they're relatively small. He'll fit in the palm of my hand. Um, and like I said, they're really, really quick and easy to paint. They make a fun little project here. Uh, they do come with the key ring uh, already attached, uh, but it does come out. This is a, a little eyelet uh, screw, and so you can take it off. Uh, for painting purposes if you'd like. Um, personally I like to leave it in there um, just to have something for for me to hold on to while I'm painting it. So um, you know the process here is still the same. I primed them with some automotive primer first and uh, I just had a whole bunch of them there um, and we're just sitting there doing live paint demos. Had folks come up and they just enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. So what I have here is uh, is one of the other ones that I was getting ready to do. Um, we have two of the versions of the Alien. One with an open mouth and one with a closed mouth. And so um, this one I left the uh, little eyelet in the top and basically I have clamped onto it with a hemostat here and then I've covered up the key ring uh, with a piece of blue tape. And so this makes it nice for me to be able to hold it and then if I want to spray a, a coating over the top of it I can. It makes it really nice and easy to hold it like that. So um, anyway, uh, great little product, really easy to do uh, and I'm going to shoot a demo on me painting this little guy right here. Okay, so uh, I have my uh, primed Mars Attacks Alien here. This is the uh, closed, closed mouth version. We do have an open mouth version as well. Um, so uh, I just want to do a different uh, take on this. Uh, this one I painted at a show. I uh, didn't have any reference material. I did know that he had some green up here and he's kind of a fleshy or bone color. Uh, and then he had the brain here. So um, the colors I'm going to use in this one may be a little bit different, uh, especially when it comes to the brain. Uh, I'm going to do this one more of the comic book style. Um, so the colors will definitely be a little different, maybe not as realistic. So uh, anyway, so we'll clear this aside. Um, the little blue thing here that you see, this is a piece of silicone. It's actually a little leftover piece. Um, I use these as paint uh, palettes because nothing will stick to them. Uh, because it's pure silicone, um, glues and nothing else really will stick to it except other silicone. So uh, this is great. I have them in different sizes. Uh, and I use them uh, primarily for paint palettes. So, um, well, let's get started with this guy. So I've primed him with automotive primer. So that, I use the automotive primer because it really attaches itself to pretty much anything. Uh, so I like using that. And I think what I'm gonna do is do a, a, an overall base color um, with this, like all of his, you know, fleshy areas if you will this should be kind of a lime green color um, and then the brain um, is a little more meaty I guess if you will so overall color on the brain here I'm actually going to do kind of a, a reddish kind of a meaty color and um, and then I'm going to lay down a, um, a green here for the uh, face and stuff so uh, let's get started now if this is the first time you're viewing one of my videos well then um, let me just go over a little bit really quickly about the paints that I use. So what is the best paint to use when you're painting uh, resin kits or model kits of any kind? Uh, honestly, there is no best. It's what works best for you. Um, I use the cheapest paint I can find. You can see this is, uh, this is called Americana here. Um, I use some, this was a really old bottle here. It's an old Liquitex. Um, this one is Artist Touch. I believe I got this at uh, Big Lots. Uh, no, not Big Lots. Um, 
Where did this come from? Another one of those, you know, just like a Michaels or something like that. Um, so whatever paint works. Now I have been really impressed with this Master's Touch. It's an acrylic, but it's like a, I don't want to say a heavy body acrylic, but the pigments in it are really, really strong. So I've been using this a lot. I really like this stuff. And I am going to use some of that maybe on this Alien. I have one that's a really, you can see a really bright green here. They call it an olive green. Um, I haven't seen too many olives that bright of a green before, but uh, I'm probably going to use this for the alien flesh because it does kind of work really well towards that. Maybe a little mix uh, with this other green here, which is a phalo green. Um, I'll put a little of that in there. But anywho, uh, as far as the colors go, uh, it's it's um, kind of whatever works for you. I think that I'm going to use uh, one of my new favorite colors here, and this is from the... Uh, once again from the Americana line and you can see a dollar 49 is what I paid for this and it's uh, uh, what two two ounces of it and it works fine um, it's not the best paint on the planet but it works and especially when you're hand brushing this works really well um, so I'm gonna start with this and this is gonna be uh, for his head his brain cavity if you will and this particular color is called brandy wine brandy um, I've been playing around with this color. It was just, uh, this was in a mixed lot of colors. I just picked up a whole bunch of them. And um, I actually like it. Um, I wasn't sure. I thought, well, just kind of a weird red color, kind of a reddish brown color. <clears throat> but the more I used it, the more I started liking it. So let's see if I can find a, uh, a decent brush here for this. We'll show you all my scraggly brushes here, I guess. Um, so here we go. Let's um, let's um, put this down. Now the reason I'm going to put this dark color down first, this real meaty color, and you'll see this when it dries too. It really does have kind of a meaty, uh, meaty color to it. Um, is because I am going to dry brush back over it. Remember, I'm going to try to do this whole thing with nothing brush, no no airbrush whatsoever. So. I'm just putting this on here, pretty liberal. Now when it comes to his forehead here, I'm trying to stay away from that. I'm going to kind of work my way over. In fact, I'm just going to kind of do a little bit like that so you can kind of see where it's going to be. I'm going to stay away from here. Um, but I'm just go ahead and get this on here. Make sure to get it down in the crevices. And that's the really important part is to get it down in between the crevices, in between those little lobes of the brain here. Um, Let's see here. And I'm using this straight out of the bottle. Um, I don't normally do that, but this brandy wine color I really do like, and I, and I like it straight out of the bottle. I can lay other colors on top of it, washes, and, um, and it really starts to look, well, meaty. <laughs> I can't explain it any other way. Uh, looks pretty good. So we're going to let this dry and then I'm going to go ahead and start laying in the green color here as well. All right, folks, so let's go ahead and mix up the green for the alien's face. Um, once again, I'm going to work from a dark to light because I'm going to do a lot of dry brushing on this. And so I'm going to start off with this uh, Master's Touch. This is called the Olive Green, although it looks like more of a lime green to me. Um, I mentioned earlier about where I purchased this. Um, it's a medium body paint, so it's got a little bit of a, you know, a heft to it there. Um, but I bought these at um, Hobby Lobby. Um, I was sitting here thinking, where in the world did I get these paints? I couldn't remember the name of the place to save my life. Uh, Hobby Lobby. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a little dab of the dark green. This is a phalo uh, green here uh, with that olive green. I'm going to mix the two together. Now I also mentioned about not thinning this with water, so I'm going to mix these two together here in a moment, but I need to put a, something in there to thin them down ever so slightly to help the mix and help, the, um, help me to spread the color out. Um, normally I would use something like a Future Floor Wax, and unfortunately they don't make that anymore. They do have something similar, it's called Pledge um, Floor Care System, I believe. Um, Basically the same thing, except it has that lemony smell, and I really just don't care for that, so I don't use it anymore. And until they get rid of that lemony scent, I'm not going to use it. Uh, I am instead going to use this. Um, actually, let me turn around this way. 
This is a Liquitex low viscosity acrylic uh, airbrush medium. So this is intended to extend the flow rate of the paint, basically thin it down a little bit so it'll go through your airbrush. But if I apply a, just a little bit of this to these medium body paints, then it's gonna make it a little bit easier for me to brush it on. So uh, what I'm gonna do is just put a little of this in here. And this to me, um, acts a lot like the future floor wax used to. It does um, discolor the paint ever so slightly for a little bit. It's, see, it's white. It's almost like glue. It's like a, like Elmer's glue or something set really, really thin. Um, but what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna mix this down a little bit. I'm gonna get a little of this phthalo green and put in here, and it really is not gonna take a whole lot of that phthalo green. See how dark that got so quick? Um, so it's really not going to take a whole lot of that because the green that I'm looking for is somewhere in between these two but closer to this lime green. So um, this is getting pretty close. Maybe just a touch darker. Might have gone too dark there. Nope, it's looking pretty good. All right. So this is about where I want to be. It's kind of a bluish green kind of a color. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, slide this out of the way and let's get this guy back in here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna paint basically his entire head here, his forehead, all this jawline, everything. Um, I try to avoid the teeth and the eyes because I have to go back in and put a, a lighter color over the top of those. So if a little paint gets on there, it's okay. Uh, but I try to avoid it if I can. And this is going to look very toy-like to begin with, and that's that's okay. Um, when we wrap this up, it's not going to. It's going to it's going to get uh, toned down quite a bit. Once again, trying to keep it off of those teeth and the eyeballs. But if you get a little on there, it's not a, it's not a deal breaker. And the reason I, I try to stay off of those areas is because it's so hard to cover um, these colors with a white or an off-white. Um, unless you just have a really heavy body paint, uh, it's very difficult to, to cover that back up. So. I try to avoid it. Sometimes you can't, and that's okay. I'm going to be doing some dry brushing here in a little bit, so uh, odds are I'm going to get a lot more paint um, in these areas that I don't want, the teeth and the eyeballs. So the less paint I can get in there, the better. There he is. He's starting. He's starting life here. looks looks a little Christmassy right now, like I said. But that's okay. We're gonna we're gonna fix that. I'm gonna try to blend some of this out a little bit. I'm gonna grab a little more of this airbrush medium here. I'm gonna thin it just a little bit more with that airbrush medium, and I'm gonna pull it into the brain cavity area here. And all I'm doing here is just kind of thinning that and just kind of drawing it up in there. So you can start to see, you know, a little bit of the uh, blending, if you will. Like I said, you don't necessarily need an airbrush to do this. Um, another technique that I'll use a lot is to either use some water would you just hear me swishing around there in my paint cup or in my water bucket there? Um, maybe take a little water and wet the area first, a little too much. Wet that area first and then throw a little paint on it and pull that in. And what it does is it kind of, it never lets that paint set, you know, it kind of thins it out and it never lets it kind of set too much on one hard edge. So it kind of flows the paint out a little bit and softens the edge. 
But anyway, uh, here we are. We've got a nice little start. I'm going to let this dry and then we'll continue on with it. 